Hello, my name is Julia. And my name is Neda. Welcome to Eastleigh's BBC School News Report. Here in Eastleigh, we celebrated World Book Day by dressing up as our favourite characters. Find out more with Andrea. Hi, I'm here with Mr. Anderson, and we're here to ask him some questions about the World Book Day. Why is the World uh, Book Day so important? It's so important because everyone around the world is celebrating reading. And reading is important because it's so enjoyable. It helps you learn lots of different things. It improves you as a person. And we want at Eastley School everyone to read as much as they can and be readers when they're adults because it's such a wonderful, enjoyable thing to do. I chose this book because I like it. Uh, it's about a girl named Manala and she fell in to go to school. Why did you dress up as Peter Pan? Don't give it away. Um, I dressed up as Peter Pan because I think he's one of my favourite fictional characters. He's a timeless character. He doesn't age, just like me. Um, so I thought it was quite suited. Good job, uh, reporter. Hi, I'm Chatil, and I dress the best bad girl. I've uh, been dressed today as Sir Sherlock Holmes uh, of Scotland Yard. As you know, he is a private detective, and he always finds things out. Yes. Uh, hello, I'm Belle. My name's Sukhvi, and I like um, my character because she she's independent she's courageous and she always like she always likes looks beautiful my name is mercy i dress up as oliver twist i like the way in the movie and the in the book how he stood up for himself even though he had nothing left there was a attempt spelling bee with some of the best spellers in Eastleigh. Here is Lisa with Umran, the spelling bee winner. So how did you feel when you first started the spelling bee? Honestly, it was so scary. I was so nervous. I really didn't want to take part in the first place, but Mr. Anderson was so adamant I had to do it. So I just kind of sat down, probably on the verge of tears, to be honest. But I was okay. My friends were just making faces at me from the audience, helped me to relax a little bit, even though they were telling me I was going to lose. Um, and I was sitting next to people that I was comfortable with, so it was good. <laughs> okay. Procrastinating. Okay. Procrastinating. P-R-O-C-R-A-S-T-I-N-A-T-I-N-G. Procrastinating. During like the last few rounds. During the last few rounds, I started to get really nervous because all of a sudden we went from 10 people to six and then we went from six to three straight away. So we had to miss a round. And that made me feel quite nervous because a lot of people were just getting the questions wrong all of a sudden. Um, and in the final round when I was uh, facing off against Elisa, the words were really hard and we just kept getting them wrong, but it was okay. <laughs> Here are some stress busting tips for year 11s and also help for GCSEs. Over to the year 10s. So of all the places in the school, why am I sat here? Well, a lot of studies show that simply just going out to exercise or just going to walk through a park is probably the most relaxing things you can do for yourself. This is because of the release of hormones when you just work out or you just go outside to take a breath of fresh air. It may seem very basic, but, you'd, but it does help a lot. One of the most important tips is to work smarter, not harder. You may be under the illusion that just trying to cram a lot of tasks in one day is the best thing to do and to get work, work done, but that will really just stress you out. The best thing to do is prioritise your work. Make slots, what would require a lot of energy, what would require a low amount of energy. Make sure you focus on things that are due soon. Don't stress over things that are due in three weeks. Also, make sure you accept the fact that by the end of the day, you may not have all your work done, but that's okay because it's part of the growth pro progress. After you've recognised your stress, the next thing to do is to explore your stress. You have to work out what exactly is making you stress and how to change your lifestyle for you to adapt and not be stressed. Little changes to your timetable or just little changes to how you study since we're all students. Studying is a very stressful progress, but really a lot of people think that cramming three hours is the best way to revise. But really studies have shown that 40 minute studies along with 20 minute breaks are the best thing to do. Make sure you make give yourself little breaks to 
breathe, to have snacks, or just to chill out. One of the best tips is connecting with people. A good support network or friends and family can ease your troubles and help you see things in a different light. By doing that, they may actually solve your problems and tell you things that you never thought about in order to be, le to be more relieved. If you talk to people or just having someone there to listen, it's probably the best way to relieve your stress. If, you, if all of these tips just don't work and you do suffer from chronic stress, make sure you do see your GP as it can have very bad effects on your health and on your mental health too. In school or the workplace, counselling can be a very effective method to get over your stress. As I said, talking to people is probably the best way to get past it. There are a lot of helplines such as Childline. Thank you for listening to our tips. I do hope they work for you. Now, back to the studio. International Women's Day occurred 8th of March. Let's take this to Savannah and Elena. Many people think that men should have more rights and more pay than women, mainly men. However, did you know that NASA would have not been able to send people up into space without three strong mathematical engineering geniuses? Quick question. Do you think these geniuses were male or female? Female. Well, I can in fact reveal that you are correct. These three women are all African-American women. The first woman was Katherine Johnson also known as the computer in skirts because she was so good with computers. The second woman was Mary Jackson. She was very good with engineering and also good with mathematical problems. And the third woman was Dorothy Vaughan. She was good with engineering and mathematical problems, but her main field was maths. These women all helped NASA to be able to find the correct trajectory to fire people around our planet Earth. Now that's all from me, but over to my colleague Elena. Some made music, some made noise, all made the difference. We celebrate 125 a woman who during the past years broke records, broke grounds and suffered trials. For example, an influential woman is a Carol King. A king's legacy is easy to understand. Moreover, Carol Klein was born in 1942 in Manhattan. She played a piano when she was age four. Now that's all from me, over to the studio. Zainab and Lottie will be talking about charity fundraising for Cancer Hospital in Bangladesh. Hello, my name is Zainab. And hello, my name is Lottie. And today we are going to be talking about a charity that Eastie Community School is supporting. The money from this charity is going towards the Biani Bazaar Cancer and General Hospital. Redden Community is honoured to support this charity which is in Bangladesh. Some statistics are cancer is the sixth leading cause of death in Bangladesh. And is predicted to be an increasing cause of morbidity and mortality in the next few decades. Sadly, there is very little specialist cancer care in Bangladesh. Those who can afford it have to travel abroad to pay for their treatment and care. Those who cannot are left to suffer and die. The charity's goals are the promotion and protection of general good health and the relief of major illness, such as cancer, must be significantly in remote villages in Bangladesh. The charity's primary aim of phase one is complete, fully functioning cancer awareness and detection centre, providing initial diagnosis and educational services since February 2015. Phase two proceeded through March 2016. Services include chemotherapy, ENT and maternity wards. Their overall target remains to establish a comprehensive cancer care hospital by 2020. Eastleigh is helping this charity by supporting the annual event which is on Tuesday the 21st of March in Manor Park and the Royal Regency Hall, E12 6TH. You can contribute by attending this event. It's £20 per person or £200 per table, which is for 10 people. All of this money goes towards building the Biani Bazaar Cancer and General Hospital. Now on to the political section of this report. Here is Casey and Yogile. Today we'll be talking about the recent budget cuts instigated by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Philip Hammond. Many of you may know, a lot of your friends and family pay taxes. 
Tax is a percentage of your earning that goes towards paying the government for government-run organizations, such as the education system, the military of defense, and, and the NHS. Recently, a lot of the funding for these projects has been cut, meaning they don't receive as much as they did in the past. This could have drastic effects on not only local people in London, but on the country as a whole. First and foremost, the new policy has been put in place where bigger corporations pay less tax and smaller startup businesses pay more. Many see this as unfair because startup businesses are clearly less financially stable. Another group of people that would have been affected is the self-employed. The self-employed would have had to pay more NICs, which is the National Insurance Contribution Tax, which goes towards funding the health services such as the NHS. Re fortunately, Hammond recently dropped this due to a campaign. Another thing that really angered local people especially is the unmentioned disability benefit cuts, which Philip Pan hinted at in Parliament. Many see this as ridiculously uneth unethical because people with disabilities already find it difficult to find a job. So these benefit cuts will make it even harder for people with disabilities to continue living in the UK. And that's your politics update. Back, Back to, to the studio. studio. There is an educational funding change on March 2016, the government made a new decision about the money provided to public schools in Britain. Affected are the overcrowded schools such as EC Community School, in which funding has been dramatically stashed, slashed in order to provide better resources for schools outside of the UK. This was prompted as rural area schools are facing a problem of undeveloped education. Beforehand, funding used to be distributed unfairly, meaning that schools situated in London and other big cities were funded better funded in comparison to those in rural areas. However, there were still funding inequalities within urban areas. Despite the number of pupils in each school, the government believed this was unfair and decided to distribute money evenly depending on the amount of students. However, this cannot singularly justify the fund cuts. There are also many economic issues contributing to the situation, which include Brexit and the inflation of prices resulting to the decrease of the value of the pound. The country is losing money Therefore, the government is making cuts in certain departments, such as the Department of Education, which is at risk of facing a £82 million loss. Former Education Secretary Nicky Morgan stated, I still think it is the right thing to do, when voicing her opinion on the cuts. As a re result of the cuts, schools will be severely changed. For example, EC will lose almost a third of a million equivalent to the payment of six teachers, possibly made redundant. In Eastley, we may also have to sacrifice some subjects in our op options, despite the majority already being unhappy that the government is limiting their options. We have classes with up to 30 students, which are very hectic and distracting, and in order to compensate for the lack of teachers, there will be an increase of pupils per classroom. Currently, the overcrowded classrooms decrease the quality of education and increase the pressure on teachers of which 75% already find the workload unmanageable. Even though the cuts are ultimately reducing in the quality of education for us, the government is not considering the factor that the curriculum is becoming increasingly difficult. These reforms are putting a strain on both students and teachers, clearly damaging our learning experience. How does this make sense? This is our education report. Back to the studio. Here's Tasmin and Matilla on environmental causes of pollution. Over to them. Air pollution is the cause of an average 1,000 deaths per year in London, and it is estimated that in Newham, for every 250,000 people, 120 people's deaths are the result of air pollution as well. For the past five years in a row, the UK has exceeded the EU air pollution limits, and London passed its yearly pollution limit in the first week of 2016. It contributes to shortening the life expectancy of all Londoners, disproportionately impacting on the most vulnerable, the young and the elders. Therefore, air quality is an important public health issue in London. So, what is air pollution? Air pollution is the contamination of indoor and outdoor environment, and the main causes of air pollution in Newham are road traffic, fossil fuels burned for energy, emissions from industry and manufacturing, dust from building works. People exposed to high enough levels of certain air pollutants may experience irritation of the eyes, nose and throat, wheezing, coughing, chest tightness and breathing difficulties, worsening of existing lung and heart problems such as asthma, increased risk of heart attack and in extreme cases it can even cause death. How does this affect us as students? 
Studies suggest that children are more vulnerable than adults the adver because of the adverse effects of pollution. These studies have found that high levels of carbon monoxide increase absences in school, even when those levels are below the federal standards. The government has generated new schemes, such as the strategic walking routes in London and the London Cycle Network, in order to encourage people to adopt sustainable routes. They have been regulating the emissions from in industrial sources and building sites, and they also check the air quality within the borough. Additionally, they provide air quality data, information and technical support and through the air techs, they give you early warnings which alert people to high levels of pollution. However, despite plans to decrease pollution, London will likely exceed limits for another five years. So here are some things we can do to ensure that the mission of harmful pollutants doesn't exceed the limit. First of all, idling cars around schools contribute significantly to the harmful pollutants that can easily affect the student's development. And this can also lead to long-term health problems, dysfunctions and diseases. Thus make sure you turn off your ignition if you're waiting more than 10 seconds. If possible, avoid private transport and instead use public transport and also try to walk to school if possible. Drive smoothly at the same speed and within the speed limit so you can make sure you use fuel more efficiently and reduce emissions. The, these are some such systems that the school can implant in order to provide safe breathing air for students. For example, we could build living walls that naturally remove carbon dioxide and produce oxygen-rich air. They also filter the air around them and by absorbing and cleaning pollutants, the natural effect of multiplied by the sheer number of plants in the living green walls. This is a sustainable and eco-friendly method we could easily implant in schools. So, it's London's situation going to worsen to the point where we will have to wear masks like people in China? Should we start considering having air filters in our homes? Are we ever going to be able to decrease the levels of air pollution? Well, I certainly hope so. Battle, what is the Eastley Talks about? Well, EC Talks is a group of um, inspirational kids who just stood there out on, out on stage and spoke about something they're really passionate about. What was your Eastly Talks about? Well, my talk in particular was about Shias. Shias are like a type of Muslims and they're not, very, they're not known very well. And I just wanted to like get across um, and try to remove stereotypes about them and just, just wanted to be able to stand there and proudly say that I am a Shia. Was there any challenges? Well, there was a lot of commitment to be done um, during the process of building your talk. So we had to attend um, sessions regularly to like practice, and and then there was a fear of performing in front of a large audience. Yeah. What was your TED talk about? Well, my TED talk was about why you shouldn't tell people your goals because it creates a social reality where you just think you're going to pursue your goal but you're less likely to do it. Why did you decide to write about it? Well, I decided to write about it because it was just on my mind when I thought people say their goals, but half of the time they don't really pursue it. So yeah. Well, my talk was about pain and specifically why pain is good. And to use an example, I talked about my dad and the pain I've had in my life because of him. Why did you decide to talk about that? Um, well, the main message I wanted to get across is that you should look for positives and look ahead to the future when you're in depressed times like that. So I think talking about my dad was really close to me because it's, it was a long period of time where you know I was really pessimistic. But in hindsight, I, I know how it's, um, it's led to the person I am now and how it's contributed to my life. So I don't think people should run away from pain and sad experiences like that. I think they should embrace it and look for the f ahead to the future and look for the positives. Hi, I'm Savannah and today I'm with Melissa. So, Melissa, what was your te Eastly Talks about? My Eastly talk talks were, talk was about Alzheimer's and the reason why I chose to pick this topic is because in my family and I've known families who have gone through this um, Alzheimer's illness and it does not only affect the person with Alzheimer's it also affects like the family around them and it's just basically it's a way for me to show how the family how family is also affected and really that's it. Uh, that's so touching. What was your what, what was your favorite part about your Eastly talk? Well I guess 
it's not really about the EC talks, it's about like the process of creating my EC talks. It's like the way I've built my confidence and how I've seen people build their confidence throughout this like journey and how I saw everyone who did the TED Talks, how, mu how passionate they were. And it's just like a good thing to see. Hi, so today I'm here with Meg Khan, who is the More Able Program Manager. So Meg, what is Eastley Talks? Well, Eastley Talks was an idea that I kind of borrowed from the concept of TED Talks, which is an international program. Um, the idea was to give my students uh, an opportunity to put together a talk about a topic that they felt very passionately about and give them the skills and confidence mm -hmm. to stand in front of a crowd and present this talk. What was the most fun part about running this talks? Um, I think for me, the most absolutely enjoyable and satisfying part of it was seeing the students um, start from that very first session feeling incredibly nervous and feeling like they wouldn't be able to stand in front of 50 or 100 people to get to that evening where they did absolutely incredibly and I was bursting with pride. Thank you. The weather has been changing nowadays, so here is Casey with her weather. Today is a gorgeous day at Eastie Community School, very sunny, and we're here at Eastie Community School's very own weather station. Now the weather today is quite warm considering it's only just starting to be spring. It's about 12 or 13 degrees, a little bit windy, but only about five miles an hour. Now tomorrow will be a little bit cooler at temperatures about seven or eight degrees and wind speeds about 10, but that's very warm considering it's only March. This report is coming to an end, but wait a minute. I heard that you're the world millionaire. What is your favorite book? Um, I like the Harry Potter series. Why? Because um, I like the way the author writes and I think that it's a really good book. They're really good books. I am Julia. And I'm Nadal. And this was BBC School News Report 2017 Eastleigh. <laughs>